Coming up on First at Four, one of the co-founders of the Harlan Boys Choir has died. Plus, we'll talk to the new superintendent of one Eastern Kentucky school district. When I say warm, I just mean we're going above average, but it's a nice change of pace through this week. The very latest on a more pleasant forecast coming up as Mountain News First at Four starts right now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at Four, one of the co-founders and former longtime director of an internationally recognized Southeastern Kentucky choir has died. David Davies co-founded the Harlan Boys Choir in 1965, leading the group 89 presidential inauguration. Davies was also to many national and international accomplishments, such as the 19 an English teacher and a basketball coach within the Harlan Independent School System, impacting the lives of countless students during his time there. If these walls in this room and the walls of this school could talk, or at his church, uh, that right there, the people that he come in contact with, he just, he, he touched everybody. Uh, uh, I can't come up with a good word for it, it's just that I'm just proud that I had a part, or a small part in his life. Davies was 87 years old. We will hear more from those who knew him and learn more about his legendary career in Harlan tonight at 6 o'clock. And we've not been uh, told of any funeral arrangements yet. Of course, we'll pass those along when we get them. Earlier this week, an Eastern Kentucky School District named a new superintendent after its current one announced his retirement after nearly 30 years in education. And as WIMT's Dakota Makers reports, the new superintendent says he's excited to serve his community. Earlier this fall, Perry County Schools Superintendent Jonathan Jett announced his retirement effective December 31st. School board members have named his successor. Kent Campbell has lived in Perry County his entire life. He began his career in education as a social studies teacher. For the past six years, he has served as principal at two Perry County schools, serving at Viper Elementary School for three years and then three years at West Perry Elementary. Campbell says he felt called upon to put his name in the hat for the next Perry County Schools superintendent. About three years ago, uh, the, the Lord put on my heart to get my superintendency certification. So I was just being obedient and, and listening to what, you know, what he had to say to me and, and he's gonna help me during this time. Jonathan Jack congratulated Kent Campbell on being named the new superintendent and he said he knows that Campbell will enjoy serving the community and the school district just as much as he did. In Perry County, Dakota Makris, WYMT Mountain News. Campbell will assume his role as superintendent on January 1st. You'll hear more from him coming up tonight at 6. Plumbers are swamped with calls right now as freezing temperatures during the weekend cause problems for people and businesses. If you have frozen pipes, there's not much you can do until they thaw. Plumbers say you should keep the heat on and open cabinet doors to let in some heat. If people keep their houses extra warm during these kind of situations and don't close off part of the house and keep doors open and cabinets open, most likely you will not have a problem. As temperatures get warmer, water should eventually start to flow again. Now, if you discover any leaks or cracks in your water pipes, you should shut off the water, then call a plumber. Kentucky Secretary of State Michael Adams is running for re-election. His campaign tweeted out the paperwork. Adams boasts high turnouts in recent elections and being able to work with the governor to expand voting access during the pandemic. That election, along with the race for governor and other statewide offices, is next year. Well, we are back above average as we head into today, and it's been a rather nice day throughout the region, especially by late December standards throughout the uh, area right now. Plenty of sunshine playing on the tarmac in London Corbin Airport there at 51, 54 with not a cloud in the sky here in Hazard, and we're still melting that snow on the town square in Somerset. They sit at 54. Temperatures region-wide, low to mid-50s. Yes, that is warm for this time of year, especially when we should be about 10 degrees cooler than this for daytime highs 
And this warm air continues as we head through the next few days. Pinpoint Doppler is a clean sweep as expected with high pressure remaining in place through the region. So as we head into tonight, I think a lot of us stay above freezing. I can't rule out some of those isolated valley, uh, some of those isolated valley locations dropping below 32 tonight, but many of us staying in the mid 30s as we head through tonight under mostly clear skies. Details in a few minutes though on when we really bump those temperatures up, including not one but two chances for rain. That's in a few minutes. Steve. All right, Evan, thank you. Pope Francis is asking for prayers for his predecessor, Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, who he says is very ill. A Vatican spokesman later confirmed a deterioration in the former Pope's health. The 95-year-old pontiff resigned in 2013, a nearly unprecedented move in papal history. At the time, Pope Benedict cited advanced age as the reason for his resignation. It was the first time a pope had stepped down in nearly 600 years. The last pope to step down before his death was in 1415 when Pope Gregory XII resigned to end a civil war in the church after more than one man claimed to be pope. Chinese officials are responding to news the U.S. is considering implementing COVID restrictions on people traveling from China. Today, U.S. officials cited an increase in COVID cases in China and a, quote, lack of transparent data. China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson responded that any measures the U.S. takes should be scientific, moderate, and not affect, quote, people-to-people -people exchanges. The spokesman says all parties should cooperate to ensure the safe movement of people between the countries and stability of the global supply chain. One U.S. official says a decision about a possible testing requirement could come soon. We'll have more about this coming up at 5.30. Tennis star Novak Djokovic has landed in Australia ahead of the Adelaide International and Australian Open next month. This is the Joker's first visit down under since he was deported almost a year ago about his COVID-19 vaccination status. Since then, Australia has overturned a three-year ban on Djokovic entering the country, paving the way for the former world number one to compete in the 2023 Australian Open. Djokovic's nine singles titles at the Australian Open is the most in men's tennis history. New York Congressman-elect George Santos says he's determined to be part of the new Congress after admitting he lied about much of his background. But he faces growing criticism, even from fellow Republicans, about his deception. Santos apologized Monday more than a week after the New York Times uncovered most of those lies. CBS's Caitlin Hugh Burns has more from Washington. I'm not resigning. Mm -hmm. I have to leave Congress, Guy. It's going to be by a pink slip by the voters November of 2024. George Santos remains defiant even after he said he embellished his resume, including claiming degrees from elite universities he didn't attend and employment at top Wall Street firms where he never worked, all first reported by the New York Times. I understand everybody wants to nitpick at me. I, I'm going to reassure this once and for all. I'm not a facade, I'm not a persona. But Santos did more than exaggerate his resume. These are blatant lies. M my question is, do you have no shame? Tulsi, I can say the same thing about the Democrats and, and the party. Santos doubled down on his claim of Jewish heritage, even as he deleted a biographical section on his campaign website that described his grandparents fleeing Nazi persecution. I always joke, I'm Catholic, but I'm also Jew. Ish. But the Republican Jewish coalition did not find it funny, saying he deceived us and misrepresented his heritage. He will not be welcome at any future RJC event. Republican leadership in the House has remained silent, but New York party members are speaking out. The chairman of the Nassau County Republican Committee said Santos has broken the public trust. And one Republican congressman-elect, Nick LaLota, who will represent a neighboring Long Island district, is calling for a congressional investigation and possible involvement by law enforcement. Congressional Democrats are demanding an ethics probe, with some calling for him to resign or be expelled. I am not resigning. I am getting sworn in. and I will get the job done for you. That's what you elected me to do.
The Santos campaign released a statement yesterday claiming he, quote, did what he had to in order to evade smear campaigns. The statement erroneously identified Santos as the first openly gay person to be elected to Congress and said he is, quote, ready to stand tall and do the people's work. He is expected to be sworn in one week from today. Caitlin Huey Burns, CBS News, Washington. Coming up on First at Four, the latest on the winter storm that's wreaked havoc across the nation, leaving more than 30 dead in western New York alone. Plus, temperatures continue to warm as we head through the rest of this week. The latest breakdown on when we could see some showers as well. That's after this. It 